All right, let's get into some baseball now as our Phillies mailbag with Frank Close. He joins us every Tuesday at this time as uh, the Phillies struggling again. Uh, 8-1 loss last night in ugly fashion, and uh, it's been an ugly stretch of games here, Frank. Uh, the Phillies have been kind of a tough watch over the last month or so. Yeah, it's been a little bit difficult, and it seems like it's the same offenders time and time again uh, in terms of the bullpen, in terms of the starting rotation, in terms of the bats. So it just seems like in all three realms of the Phillies' world, the same struggles just seem to come time and time again. Yeah, we know that um, you, you talk about the same culprits. We'll, we'll uh, dive into the mailbag questions here in just a second. But at what point of the season do we start to see some of those culprits maybe uh, banished for a little while? The Phillies are taking a very, very patient approach. Uh, maybe a little too patient for the, the liking of many Phillies fans. But I, I think they really are committed to giving players a good, solid two months before they make any rash decisions. So I, I tend to pick June 1st. I mean, there's, there's really nothing significant about June 1st, but I think they really want to give people their due and so that they can at least say they gave them the opportunity because – in a lot of ways, if you send some of these players to AAA and others come up, uh, then what happens if those players fail a little bit? So I, 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 it could just be more of the same, and uh, and then really there's nobody to go grab to look forward to. So so I think they want to give a nice significant chunk of time to, to the players on the roster before they make any decisions. Okay, as one of those guys they might have to make a decision on, let's go to the mailbag. We'll start from the bottom up this week. Uh, Daryl wants to know, is one of those guys Michael Saunders? He was batting eighth last night. Uh, he was an all-star. The Phillies kind of signed him thinking they had protection there for Franco. Uh, hasn't worked out. He's batting eighth in the lineup. Would you rather see somebody else uh, playing right field right now and take a, a look at somebody rather than the 30-year-old Michael Saunders. The thing about Michael Saunders is all he cost the Phillies was money. Now, they they, they, they signed him rather late in the offseason uh, at a time when there are a few options available. Uh, if you remember at the time, I was suggesting Brandon Moss, but he hasn't been playing that well either. He's only batting 200 for the Royals. Uh, so they had their pick of a few left-handed bats towards the end, and uh, the, the goal was to be that lefty in between Michael Franco and Tommy Joseph in the lineup. And, and the goal was to try to give some protection to, to those guys, both of them. Even, even Joseph hitting behind him hopefully would see some better pitches if, if Saunders was, was half decent. But, but unfortunately, uh, Saunders isn't doing much of anything. He just kind of feels like a guy who's out there uh, with, with no, real, no real purpose. And, and I think the thing about Saunders is, He's the guy making the most money in that lineup that they rolled out yesterday, and he's the one hitting eighth. Now, the explanation Pete McCannon gave for it was to, quote-unquote, take some pressure off him. But, but I think this was a clear message to, to Saunders, uh, that they're not paying him to, to bat like an eight-hole hitter. And in some ways, I think the move was designed to embarrass him a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, when you consider that the next highest-paid player in that lineup right now is who? I mean, you have Odubel Herrera making a few million as part of that contract, but but everybody uh, everybody else is is at or near the the minimum at this point in their careers. So so I think this is a clear message to him to to shape up. And uh, I don't think the Phillies really have any attachment to him. Uh, if Howie Kendrick were healthy, the Phillies might just just play Altair instead and leave him on the bench. Uh, and, and I think even if you get later in the season, if, if Saunders isn't contributing anything to the Phillies, uh, they, they would have no qualms just cutting him and eating the money. So uh, the Phillies were in a position where, you know, they didn't want to appear to other teams like they're being cheap. And at the same time, they didn't want to sign anybody that would damage the club long term. Hmm. And Saunders doesn't damage the club long term. They can kind of cut him any time, and all he cost them was money. Here's a question, Frank. Um, Nick Williams doesn't seem like he's blistering, like he's pushing the Phillies to make a move. Do the Phillies have any pressure from anybody that suggests, hey, we need to get – I mean, Michael Saunders is making a lot of money, but he's not producing, and we have this kid. It doesn't seem that that guy's there, or is there someone the Phillies would like to take a look at? Well, Dylan Cousins had a really rough April, but he's hitting 300 so far in May, and he's hitting a lot of home runs. Uh, so he could be somebody who could, could push his way into the Phillies roster. Nick Williams had a better April than, than May. He's kind of tailing off a little bit, but at the same time, his power is seeming to come around a little bit more. Uh, but neither, neither player 
you look at it and say, well, he has to come up right this minute. So hopefully in a couple of months, one of the two will step up and do that. And now Roman Quinn doesn't profile as a corner outfielder, really. I mean, he's really more of a center fielder, but uh, he's he's doing a decent job at AAA, but I, I don't think that he comes up unless uh, they're looking to perhaps send a message to somebody like Odubel Herrera if he continues to struggle. Mm. Uh, I, I kind of pontificated yesterday on the show uh, about that Odubel Herrera contract. I wasn't a fan of the deal. Not that I thought they overpaid or that he was a bad uh, player or, or – um, I just didn't like the deal. I don't find him to be a guy that they needed to lock up long term. He seemed like a guy who's just a good player on a bad team um, that maybe they you know got a little overzealous on because of the way that they un- you know got him in the Rule Five draft. Well, I, I think I said it at the time. I thought that that contract made him a lot more treatable down the line. Now I didn't think they, that he would fall off to this extent thus far. It's even kind of unfair to say he's falling off. I mean, I look at Herrera, you know, he had an eight-pitcher, nine-pitcher bat the other day, and people were saying, oh, what a nice at bat by Herrera. But really, he was swinging at all kinds of stuff, low and outside and up, and uh, he was luckily fouling them off. But uh, he just he's just showing no discipline right now, and I think that's the problem. I think his, his way of trying to break out of the slump is to swing at everything and hope he connects for a hit. So, so that's something I think that can be worked out. At least he's making contact a lot of the time. But... Uh, I, I, there definitely uh, needs to be some more consistent play from from Herrera. Hey Frank, uh, what do you make of the comments? We've talked a lot about Vince Velasquez. Uh, he kind of indicated the other night that uh, maybe I should move to the bullpen. I, I'm clueless. Um, you know, sounded like a guy who's completely lost confidence. Yeah, he he is just completely defeated right now. That's the sense I get from from listening to him speak and. And you know it's it's very interesting. A lot of a lot of people have said along the lines of, "Well, that's showing he's weak." Well, I think it's showing he's human, and I think he's he's being, showing his vulnerability to us a little bit, which which is kind of nice. Not a lot of players do that, but at the same time, if it's a matter of confidence, and that's all it is, I think that there's 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 room to grow there. Now, uh, if you look at his last start. You know, he got through five innings and he gave up two runs. Now, five innings has been the typical Vince Velasquez start thus far. Now, in the sixth inning there, he ends up responsible for three more earned runs and only gets one out. So I tend to think that that's almost mental, where he gets to the point where, like, oh, well, it's the sixth inning now. I really have to hang in there. I can't have another five-inning start. And then he falls apart. So so I think it's it's just a matter of him getting some more confidence not not overthinking what's going on at the time. So I think he is very aware of all the things that we've been saying lately is that, you know, that his longevity is a concern. And so I, I, th- I, I personally think that he unraveled because he's very, very aware of that, almost too aware of that. And he doesn't have any confidence to the point where he gives up a hit to start the sixth inning, then all of a sudden he's feeling, oh, no, here, here the sky is falling once again. So uh, I, I think there's room for, for improvement there. And if that's all it is, uh, I definitely think that that he can he can kind of turn it around, but definitely a uh, definitely disappointing that his his pitching is what it is. But the fact that he, he really is taking it taking it to heart too much, yeah. I think that's something that can be corrected. Uh, we're talking with Frank Close, ninety-seven three ESPN dot com, uh, the Phillies mailbag, and the Phillies mailbag always uh, with some very. Thoughtful questions. Mike says, are you coming around on replacing Bob McClure? I saw a tweet the other day. I think it was Kevin Cooney who uh, tweeted out that um, the Phillies have never fired a pitching coach in season. So will they uh, think about maybe changing that? McClure's had a rough go at it. He's uh, sparred with the catching. Uh, The pitching doesn't seem to be developing in the way that many hope. You just mentioned Velasquez. Eichhoff looks like he's regressed. So how much of this is on Bobby McClure? I think it's unfair to, to put a lot of this on McClure. Now, now, Mike, who asked the question, he and I have been talking back and forth a lot lately about Bob McClure. So, uh, but when you can, I asked, I asked Mike a question. I said, do you blame Bob McClure for Adam Morgan not pitching well? Well, his answer kind of is no. He doesn't think much of Adam Morgan. I said, are you concerned about Joaquin Benoit being a long-term solution for the Phillies bullpen? Well, no, that's not, a, that's not really an issue either. So, uh, and Mc, or people might have a, a real concern with McClure or what you just mentioned, that uh, you're seeing some regression in the likes of Jared Eikhoff and Vince Velasquez. But 
I will add to that. I think that uh, McClure deserves the opportunity to try to pull them out of this funk. You know, the fact that a, a second-year starter, which both those guys essentially are, even though they had some experience the season before, I, I think they deserve a, a chance to falter a little bit and pull out of it. And I think McClure, as their pitching coach, deserves a chance to try to work them out of it. So, so I think it's premature to judge him on the basis of that. I think we'll see how he does. And, and by the way, nobody seems to remember that the Phillies have an assistant pitching coach in Rick Kranitz. Uh, that's his official role. Uh, he, he, he seems to slide by without anybody <laughs> noticing. So, I've never heard uh, that name before. Well, yeah, Rick Kranitz, they, about they brought that? him in at first as the bullpen coach, quote-unquote, but uh, it's really John McLaren who, who kind of manages the bullpen in-game, and, and Rick Kranitz officially has the title assistant pitching coach. So so I think the two of them, that they're, you know, they're trying to deal with these sophomore slumps, which is essentially what they are for both these players, and I think they should be judged later on how they respond to that. And in terms of the, the Cameron Rupp issue, I, I thought that was very inappropriate I didn't think that that was anything that needed to be made public. Uh, you know, he might have a real beef with, with Rupp, and maybe it is. Maybe that was not the best pitch to call to Bryce Harper last week, but you, you deal with that behind closed doors. I think that very public perception just makes, makes, makes McClure look worse, and I think it makes the Phillies as a whole look a lot worse because I think people tend to side with, with Cameron Rupp in that situation. So, uh, But as, you're, as you mentioned the, the Phillies haven't fired a pitching coach midseason. I think part of the reason you don't do that is because the question becomes, well, who do you get midseason to, to uh, you know, coach your, coach your um, pitchers? Now, Rick Kranitz would be the, the natural one to fill in for a while if they had to make a change for, you know, emergency's sake. But there's really not a lot of people sitting around that you can come in and it's going to turn everything around midseason. So, so if the Phillies would, were to make a change – it would probably be after evaluating this whole season and and maybe make a change going into 2018 if they decided to. But McClure is not going to be fired midseason, in my opinion. And, and I think that, again, we need to see this whole season play out and see how he dealt with this adversity before we make a final decision. All right, Frank Close says the mailbag up for more uh, on the Phillies. Check out 97.3 ESPN.com. Uh, he's got a piece up right now, too. Uh, on a uh, Philly uh, prospect that is injured, and that's uh, Valentin down there at AAA. And you wonder if uh, Scott Kingery is going to get the call up here shortly. Yeah, I think they're going to wait a little bit. I don't. Th- I don't think they want to make the promotion for Kingery as a knee-jerk reaction. But um, Scott Kingery has only played 75 games at AA, and I think they want to let him see some of that pitching a second and third time before they decide to move him to AAA. But but certainly there is a natural landing spot for him at AAA. Uh, the Phillies are just going to use veteran utility man Pedro Florimond for now. But uh, I think once once Kangaroo sees the pitching in the Eastern League a second or third time, he might get the move up to AAA. All right, Frank. Well, uh, Phillies back in action tonight, uh, this home stand here. We'll see if they can turn some things around. Taking on the uh, Colorado Rockies, who beat the Phillies 8 to one last night. An ugly game. It uh, turned bad late in the game. is uh, tough to watch. And uh, we'll see if they can turn things around tonight. Thanks, pal. Thank you. All right, Frank Close, everybody here on the Sports Bash, 97.3 ESPN, at Frank Close. That's close with a K. And uh, check out uh, his work at 97.3 ESPN.com and Sports Talk Philly.